everybody, it's Emily back with another Grass River micro class. So a couple weeks ago, I was walking through this very stand of hemlocks and came across a porcupine. And that inspired me to do a micro class about porcupines in winter. Um, they have some pretty awesome adaptations that help them get through these cold lean times. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So unlike some of our other large rodents, porcupines don't hibernate but they do maintain um, a den throughout the winter that they will hole up in for days on end if it's really bad weather. Um, and they usually spend most days uh, in there and they come out at night to forage. Um, and it's really interesting because porcupines show really high site fidelity to these dens, meaning that they come back to the same den year after year and can use a den for their entire life every winter. So, and they can live to be up to 12 years, so that's a long time. And often these dens are hollowed out um, parts of a large tree, and you'll see oftentimes like a huge um, buildup of scat underneath um, the tree. Like in this photo of this porcupine den I found um, on a different preserve this winter. Um, but they don't, they're not always large hollowed out trees. Sometimes they're logs. Sometimes in rockier areas, they can be um, crevices in rock outcroppings. That's common in New England. So in addition to needing a good denning site, porcupines also look obviously for a good food supply in their winter home range. And that happens to be a very specialized food source in the winter for many porcupines. And by that, I mean, they pretty much only eat hemlock in the winter. Um, and so hemlock stands like this one are a great place to look for porcupines in winter. Um, not only because the porcupines eat the inner bark and um, the needles of them, but also hemlocks are pretty thick foliage um, and therefore they decrease the amount of snow that's on the ground. So when porcupines are traveling on the ground um, from tree to tree, it's uh, easier for them because the snow isn't so deep. And as you can imagine, porcupines are basically like little snow plows in the winter. You know, they're very round and they've got all these quills. And so having um, snow that's not very deep is really helpful for them. Okay, so they will eat hemlocks. Um, and often what they do is because they're uh, pretty large bodied relatively and pretty heavy, they can't get all the way to the very tips of the branches where like the newest growth is. So they will get as close as they can and then nip off the end of the branch and then eat it, you know, um, getting nutrients from the needles, the twigs, the bark, um, and then they'll drop the rest of the branch when they're done. And so often in porcupine, in a porcupine home range in winter, you see what are called nip twigs littering the ground. Um, and often uh, you can identify these by the fact that they're cut um, very cleanly at a 45 degree angle. And sometimes if the twig is large enough in diameter, you can actually see the little lines made by the porcupine incisors gnawing that off um, and then snacking on it and then dropping it to the forest floor when it's done. So sometimes if there isn't hemlock available, porcupines will eat and use territories in the winter that are dominated by white pine uh, sugar maple and yellow birch, but I tend to think of porcupines as very intertwined with hemlocks in winter. So as you can imagine, that's not a very high quality diet to be eating basically needles and bark and twigs. So porcupines have some pretty awesome adaptations to help them deal with that. So in order to get as many nutrients as they can out of this low quality food, uh, porcupine digestive systems actually make up 75% of their body cavity. So their digestive systems are super long. So there's as much time as possible to extract any nutrients that there are in that bark or in those needles. Um, and they also have what's called a cecum, which is a little pouch um, that actually hosts bacteria uh, that help the porcupine break down the cellulose um, in the bark because the porcupine is not able to do that on its own. Um, also, other adaptations that porcupines have for eating this low quality diet, they've got really strong jaw muscles for chewing through wood and they have incisors that continuously grow like all rodents do, but porcupine incisors grow 12 inches a year. So their teeth are continuously growing um, because they're continuously also being worn down by this really tough uh, bark that they're eating. 
So even though they have all these physical adaptations to help them extract every calorie they can from their diet in winter, um, they're still not getting a lot. And so they also decrease their activity to decrease the amount of calories that they're using. Um, so their home ranges, one Quebec study found uh, that they decrease by 80 to 90% from summer to winter. So they're really not moving around much, really conserving their energy. They usually feed only 100 meters away from their den site, no more. Um, and another thing they do to conserve energy is if you are in porcupine territory, you'll see these trails that they make um, leading from one tree to the next and they use these trails. They're like little troughs um, in deep snow. They look like troughs uh, or, you know, they, they're just areas of packed down snow um, that they use continuously um, to minimize the effort that it takes to walk through fresh snow. One last trick porcupines have up their sleeve um, is their coat. They have really dense fur underneath their quills, dense um, under fur, and then their quills are actually modified guard hairs, and those turn out to be quite insulating also. Um, even with all of these adaptations though, you know, figuring out feeding on hemlock, they got the cecum, the long digestive system, the pack down trails, the decrease in home range size, um, even still, Porcupines lose a lot of body fat in winter. Um, one study out of Alaska found that they go into winter with just under 60% body fat, which is really chunky, by the way. Um, but they lose up to a third of that or more um, throughout the winter. So winter is definitely a time of nutritional stress for porcupines. Um, so next time you're walking under a stand of hemlock, look up and see if you can find a porcupine. Um, and like I said, they're usually denned up in the, during the day and come out at night to feed. But with the warmer weather, oftentimes males especially will spend multiple days um, out in a tree feeding. So you have a good chance of seeing them um, as the weather warms up here.